Bottom of the hour, I'm Brooke Baldwin, and for the next 30 minutes, we are getting all sides from the stories you will be talking about at the dinner table tonight. I want to start here with the U.S. Postal Service saying today it will shut down Saturday mail service. That starts in August, but it's making waves today. Americans simply aren't sending as much mail, opting for paying bills online, using email. The result? The Postal Service posted a record loss of $15.9 billion last year. The Postmaster General saying today, quote, you can't beat free. So let's bring in our panelists to talk all things Postal Service. John Murray, back today, entertainment journalist and all-around pop culture expert. Lauren Ashburn, back as well, editor-in-chief of Daily Download. Joining us, Amy Palmer, entertainment reporter and founder of Power Women TV and... Last but not least, Chris Freights, national correspondent for National <laughs> Journal. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Chris Freights, I'm just going to begin with you as a newbie on the show. Um, let me ask you this. No Saturdays. Big surprise. You care? You know, it's interesting, Brooke, because a lot of folks here in Washington are thinking, well, maybe this is the Postal Service move to take away a delivery day to try to get some sympathy and, and do the most extreme thing first. We're going to cancel service. Maybe we'll get more congressional funding. But I'm not really sure anybody cares. I mean, if you don't get mail on Saturday, what, you're going to have to mail somebody's birthday card a couple days earlier if they Amy, have a Saturday birthday? Amy, right? do you care? Do you feel the sympathy for the, for the USPS? The deal is this, anyone who's running a business know it comes down to simple economics. The post office is losing billions of dollars a year. Let's not forget, this is a business, people. Why are we using taxpayer money to fund a business that isn't working? You have to bring it down to the basic economics. So, yes, mail that birthday card out on Monday. I think your mother will be okay about yeah, it. To be clear, <laughs> you know, yes, they have been borrowing billions from taxpayers because, as we mentioned, they had lost something like $16 billion last year. This is supposed to help them save $2 billion. Really, it's a drop in the bucket. Uh, uh, let me go to you, um, Lauren, because one question people are now throwing around, should, should the U.S. Postal Service, should it just be privatized? You know, I can't say that we need to go that far, but I do have to commend the Postmaster General for doing this in a way that saves people's jobs. If you look at the way that he's doing the cuts, it's through part-time hours, it's through retirement, and he's doing it in a way that is helpful to people as Still, opposed to just saying... the unions don't like it. The unions don't well, like it. Well, they don't, but they don't like it, but it's better than getting fired, don't you think? <laughs> John, do you think they should take it a step further? I mean, if they've been hemorrhaging all this money, would you care if they, let's say, every other day during the week slash service? Well, I care about losing my Saturday service, Brooke. I you mean, do. I don't know about you, but I feel like my checks always show up on Saturdays. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm excited about them making a decision that's saving jobs. And I know Lauren is going to hate this, but they probably could save a few jobs if they get Lance Armstrong to return the $30 million they <laughs> invested in him and sponsorship money. Would you money. stop with his name? Just, I do if, not want to hear Lance Armstrong's is name again. We are never talking Lance Armstrong with Lauren ever, ever again. But I, I will talk Chris Brown. Can we talk about this uh, to the four of you? Remember the community service that he was supposed to be serving, that 180 days that he got because he he beat and he, you know, he, he pleaded guilty to beating his girlfriend, Rihanna. That was four years ago. Could he be in more trouble because a district attorney in Los Angeles says, um, yeah, he didn't do that community service. That's next. <laughs> mulligan, sir. Mulligan. Take a mulligan. I took something for my sinuses, but I still have this cough. Truth is, a lot of sinus products don't treat cough. They don't? Nope, but Alka-Seltzer Plus Severe Sinus does. It treats your worst sinus symptoms, plus that annoying cough. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, that was my fault, sir. Alka-Seltzer Plus Severe Sinus. Oh, what a relief it is. Try Alka-Seltzer Plus Severe Sinus day and night for complete relief from your worst sinus symptoms. Cream Puff Refi? Cash Call has an unbelievable deal. We'll pay all the closing costs and close your refi at 2.875% rate and APR in as little as two weeks. That's cheaper than we've heard of, well, ever. So call 877-890-CASH for your Cream Puff Refi. I joined Matt because my cousin, uncle, sister, met her husband, met his wife, met her new fiance on Match.com. Did you know that people who join Match are three times more likely to find a relationship than people who don't? I figured, why not me? Start for free today. Closed captioning brought to you by Franklin Templeton Investments. A global leader in investment management for 60 years. Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective.
gun raids. In the dark of night, AC360 goes to the front lines of California's fight against the armed and dangerous. Tonight at 8 and 10 on CNN. Are you in big trouble with the IRS? Do you owe more than 10000 in back taxes? Have unfiled tax returns? An audit? Wage garnishment or bank levy? StopIRSDebt.com is the trusted, affordable way thousands have resolved and lowered millions in tax debt. The lady from the IRS knocked on my door and informed me that I owed the IRS $75,000, including the penalties. So I reached out to Stop IRS Debt. They took over, they lifted my bank levy, and they got the IRS off my back. Rated A-plus with the Better Business Bureau, our legal team is ready to step up and step in today. They are absolutely awesome. I am relaxed and at ease. They are the best. Stop IRS collections and resolve your tax debt. Call 800-410-8784 or go to StopIRSDebt.com. Jake Tapper reports The Uncommon Valor of Clint Romache, CNN tomorrow night, 10 Eastern. All right, back with the panel, due back in court today, Chris Brown, not for something he did. It's actually for something uh, some say he didn't do. The pop singer is facing accusations that he lied about finishing the community service that was assigned to him after he assaulted his then and current girlfriend, Rihanna. Let me open up uh, the panel. And, and John, since this is your wheelhouse and we have talked about the chair throwing, we've talked about the alleged Frank Ocean punching, we've talked about the stolen, stolen cell phone. Now we have the fact there are these allegations. He didn't do these 180 days. Uh, who do you believe? Because his attorney said he did. You know, Brooke, this is a hard one for me. Like, I've given, on this very show, given Chris the benefit of the doubt, I've been a vocal supporter that he deserved a second chance because he committed his crimes, the initial one, as a teenager, and I thought he faced his charges like a man. However, if the allegations are true, this just isn't a good sign. I mean, you've got to serve your time. You've got to do what the court, uh, you know, what you agreed to do in the court, and you've got to complete the fulfillment of it. That's what you have to do. So if it turns out that this is true, this isn't going to bear well for him at all. It Amy, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, the general rules don't apply to Chris Brown. This is somebody who assaulted the biggest pop star in the world. He can continue to sell millions of albums. He has 12 million Twitter followers. He thinks he's above the law. I'm not surprised by this. I don't know why his fans would be at this point. He's arrogant. He thinks that he doesn't have to follow the rules. And frankly, I think it's time that he does pay the price for what he's done. So listen, here's the kicker, because this motion, I have this motion here. I've been, I've been looking at it. The motion doesn't say, uh, hey, Chris Brown, you need to either, you know, doesn't uh, revoke his, his probation or doesn't, you know, ask him to, to go to jail. It's basically saying, look, you know, you need to redo uh, these 180 days. Um, and, and let me just add this little bit of color. This is, this is uh, page 14. Richmond Police Department, this was supposed to be done in Virginia, reported that the defendant was picking up trash for four hours on this particular day. Goes on. The information obtained from this private airline shows the defendant was en route from Richmond to Cancun, Mexico, on that very day. Chris Freights, you talk budget. I'm going to make you talk Chris Brown. Uh, <laughs> what do you think if he's heading to Mexico? You know, I just, I just wonder the above the law here because it's so interesting to me that this, they don't want him to go to jail. That he also just gets probation. That, that so he is kind of right that he, if he's feeling above the law, they're not revoking his probation. They're not sending him to jail. They're saying, hey, would you just finish it? I just think it hurts his brand. I think you know, folks are going to get a little bit fed up with this, uh, this idea that uh, you know he can just do whatever he wants. It's, it's not very appealing. Is it a and double I just brand? Wonder, is it good business? What is brand is standard? what I want to know. Is it a double standard for folks in Hollywood that they seem to, you know, if the allegations of the motion is true, get off easier? Lindsay sure Lohan, like anybody? Uh, yeah. Too soon? <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, yeah. you say, well, what lessons? I mean, uh, Amy points out his 12 million Twitter followers. I mean, big picture, you have young people, right? They actually, they, they look up to Chris Brown. Uh, Lauren, you get the final word on this. What message is this sending to the youth in our country that if you, you know, aren't exactly doing your community service, as this motion alleges, you're not really in that much of trouble? It says that we have lousy, lousy role models in this country from John Lance Armstrong to all of the other very famous people, Tiger Woods, all of these people who have the trust of the American people and especially the youth of this country, and they're blowing it. 
Okay, I'm moving on from Chris Brown. We've got to talk about this second grader. The second grader apparently suspended from school for playing make-believe, for, for throwing this imaginary grenade. It, look, it's a country right now on edge post Newtown. Is this over the top? Marinade over the commercial. Back after this. Imagine yourself in a stress list, a place for comfort with all the calm and relaxation you could ever imagine. A personal oasis of tranquility where time is your own and every movement is in slow motion. Imagine that peace of mind that begins with comfort, the comfort of Stressless. Now for limited time, Stressless can help you find that peace of mind. Purchase any Stressless and upgrade your leather for free, a savings of up to $500 per seat. Stressless conforms to your body, supporting your head, neck and back to leave your entire body feeling refreshed and rejuvenated. It's the level of comfort so incredibly indulgent. You'll want to enjoy the unique stressless feeling throughout your home. Everyone deserves to experience true comfort. And Stressless, the innovators of comfort, offers something for everyone. All designed to fit your size, decor or comfort lifestyle. Call now to find your local retailer and for a free catalog. Bringing back the panel, every kid pretends to be a superhero, right? I remember spinning around the playground trying to be Wonder Woman, try to beat the bad guy, save the world. Well, that is reportedly what got seven-year-old Alex Evans of Loveland, Colorado, suspended from school. In fact, here is how Alex tells it. I uh, pretend I had something in my hand. I pretend in the box and there's something shaking in it. And I'm like, and I go, so nothing can get out of it and destroy the world. I just can't believe I got dispended. Dispended, he says. So this <laughs> second grader who was dispended and his mother say he was suspended for throwing an imaginary grenade. Now the school district tells us it's actually more to it uh, that it's never it never actually suspended a student for an imaginary weapon. But it does raise the question about zero tolerance policies and are we too on edge after what happened in Newtown? So Lauren. Uh, first to you, I mean, it, certainly it's not the first time a zero tolerance policy has gone too far, but what do you think? An imaginary grenade? G give me a break, okay? This <laughs> is ridiculous. This is the nation running amok. These kids are playing. Play is not violent and aggressive, it's play. There's a very, very famous author named Michael Thompson, and he wrote Raising Cain, mm -hmm. and I happened to hear him speak, and he said, look, boys all around the world, in all of society, play rough, and there has to be some tolerance for that, and as long as they are not going after people aggressively, other children violently, then we have to cut them some slack. It's who but they are. where do we draw the line because of what happened in Newtown? I think it's now 54 days since, right? And we've been talking so much about uh, fear of violence, et cetera, in schools. Chris, uh, where do we draw the line? Are we too on edge? Are we taking this too far? I mean, this feels too far. If you want to, uh, you know, give the kid a timeout, you know, we used to put, put you on the wall, take away recess, that's one thing. To kick a kid out of school, we had it happen in Washington just a few days ago, brought a toy gun to school and was suspended. That just seems a bridge too far. I mean, boys, I, I used to play, you know, we, we used to have play guns. And you got in trouble, play cops. Rates? I, I didn't get in trouble because I didn't bring it to school. But even even my friends who don't allow guns uh, in their homes, play guns with their kids, the boys make it out of toast. I mean, it's just going to happen. You know, there was a story in uh, Georgia a couple of years ago where a, I believe she was a sixth grader. She came to school. She had this long keychain attached to this Tweety Bird wallet. Here she was. And uh, she was suspended from this school. And apparently the parents couldn't appeal initially because they were saying, here's the chain. They were saying the chain was too long. Uh, you know, so there are obviously multiple examples of this that we looked at the, the there was a, a website that once exist and there were absolutes for this particular elementary school and number two under the absolute list no weapons real or play no illegal drugs or alcohol um, I don't know if any of you how many parents do we have on the panel anyone Silence. That's a no. Okay. No, Lauren, I said Lauren, yes. Lauren, I'm Lauren, raising Lauren. my hand. I didn't. I didn't see it. So Lauren, I mean, if you have, if you had a child and this happened to your child, what would you do? I have three children, 12, 9, and 5. And let me tell you, things like this have happened to me. And not in the school, but my son did have a toy gun at one point, And my daughter packed up to go 
on a flight with all of us, and she, I wasn't watching what she packed, and the four-year-old threw a toy gun, and we put it through the metal detector oh, no. at the airport. And what happened? Well, you, you can just imagine how crazy everybody went. I mean, here it was just a <laughs> four-year-old. But in that instance, can you understand this, if we're being so over-secure I got it, okay? I get the it airports, there. Right? Okay. Yes, Brooke, I get it there. I get it there. But without an actual physical object, I, I have such a hard time. These are second graders. And what happened to talking to, ki to kids? They're good listeners, right? Can't you say to them, look, this is the appropriate thing. We don't allow this in this school. You can do this at home. But I do have to add one other thing. Yeah. We're not hearing the school's point of view on this, are we? They right. can't Wait, talk well, about the it. Thing. They can't talk about it. It's an individual case, an individual child, and they can't go there. So we only sort of extrapolate from what we can get from, from the right. child and the parent. John. Last, hey, la Brooke. you get the last, you get the last yes, word. Yes. Can you empathize at all at with the, the school? Here. No, this was a <laughs> teaching lesson. It was an, an, an invisible situation here. I mean, what are they going to do next? Start institutionalizing kids for having invisible friends? I mean, that would have happened to all of us. You know, I was in love with the black girl and Jim and the holograms, but she wasn't real. What are we going to put me in an institution? We don't punish kids for invisible actions. Okay. Nice gym reference, by the way. I was a fan as well. So, final topic for you all after this break, and that is, how can you go wrong with Steven Seagal? So it turns out the martial arts movie star will be out this weekend training these, these so-called armed posses to help protect our schools in Joe Arpaio country. I do a lot of research on Angie's List before I do any projects on my home. At Angie's List, you'll find reviews written by people just like you. I love my contractor, and I am so thankful to Angie's List for bringing us together. Angie's List. Reviews you can trust. Golden Corral just passed America's Family Budget Act. Right now, kids eat for just $2.99 Monday through Thursday. It's all your endless Golden Corral favorites, including our new sirloin filet and our nonstop butterfly shrimp. The $2.99 Kids Dinner Special, only at Golden Corral. Jim is 38, mortgage, married, three great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month? 60? 40? Actually, none of the above. Jim can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $19 a month. His secret? Select Quote. Select Quote is impartial. They'll comparison shop the pick of insurance companies like these to give you a choice of your best prices. Select Quote has great savings on term life for women, too. Jim's wife, Deidre, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. Select Quote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or go to SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop. You save. Back with the panel, final topic. When the NRA suggested using armed volunteers to protect schools in the wake of Newtown, Sheriff Joe Arpaio in Arizona apparently took it to heart. He has appointed armed volunteers to patrol schools in Maricopa County, and this upcoming weekend, he is going to train 40 of those volunteers with a simulated school shooting. We got a release from uh, Sheriff Arpaio. It says teenagers have volunteered to play students so who is teaching the class here? Here's a hint. A team of terrorists have taken over. Wake up the president. But there's just one thing they didn't count on. The cook. Are you like some special forces guy or something? No, I'm just a cook. Oh my God, we're gonna die. Ah! Yep. Movie tough guy and posse volunteer Steven Seagal is one of the instructors here in Maricopa County. Oh, and uh, news crews will be allowed to catch the whole thing on camera. That said, Chris, is this, you know, just another one of our Pio's grabs for, for attention or is there validity here? You know, it feels very PR to me, this idea that we're going to bring a Hollywood box office star in on a school shooting. It kind of conflates those two issues of violence in movies and reality and kind of blurs the lines here, which, you know, in Washington, they're debating kind of how much influence movies and violent images have over these kinds of events. And now, you know, this sheriff is 
blending these two things, you just got to wonder what he's thinking here. It's interesting you bring up what's happening in Washington. Sort of side note, you know, we saw these celebrities coming out today asking Congress to, to do something, to act. And I'm curious, Amy, I'm going to throw this to you. Do you think celebrities, just, just in general, should even have a role in this whole gun debate that the nation's having? Well, listen, these are the people that we look at in movies, on television. These are the people that our children are emulating. Steven Seagal is a branding genius. This is a man who starred in a reality show called Lawman. He's actually playing one on TV, and he's he is actually one in real been life. deputized. Let me just right. point that he's, out. For, he's been involved with law enforcement for 20 years. So it's not like he's just showing up for this big PR stunt, which I do think it is. But he is actively involved in this. So should celebrities be involved in this sort of dialogue? Absolutely, because they are our role models. But I think this is also part of a PR and branding effort on his part. Lauren, do you think our celebrities are our role models? Yeah, I think it might be the wrong question. I, uh, Brooke, because I think as a mother, I'm going to play the mom card here, and play I'm going to say, okay, what happens after Steven Seagal, the movie star, has come, and all of these people have been trained, and it's really great, and and then you have the, his posse that is going around to all of these schools, guarding the schools, and then who do the kids trust? How mm. do they know this crazy guy with a gun here? Is he the real crazy guy? Mm. Is this guy who doesn't look like a deputy a gun guy? It's the whole process to me is crazy that you have this posse that's going around and then to put a role model on top of it, nuts. It's interesting you bring up the process because we were covering a story last week in Illinois, right? There was a school that was firing blanks as a sort of a simulated school shooting similar to what they'll be doing. Um, a little bit different, but similar to the idea that they're going to be doing this week in Maricopa County, which just br it brings me to the question, what do you make of these simulated school shootings in this climate right now? I mean, obviously the priority is getting these kids prepared if and when uh, the most horrific of horrifics happen, but, but do you think this works? You, you know, my son, I guess, boy, I'm talking a lot about my kids today. They're going to be psyched. <laughs> but my son had a code red lockdown at his school just the other day. Wow. They all had to stand around their lockers. This is in, you know, Bethesda, Maryland. They stood around their lockers, and these poor seventh graders had to be quiet for 15 minutes while the teachers locked the doors and all of the lights are out. And I'm glad that they're doing those kinds of exercises to prepare. I just have a hard time with with the other part of it which is the outside where you're getting all of these these people you don't know carrying guns around the school and the kids don't know who's good and who's but bad. But can you understand where, John, can you understand where the school is coming from? I mean, their priority is to protect their, their, young, their young girls and boys. And so whatever links they perhaps are going to, they're doing it in some cases to make sure if and when it happens that they know what they're doing. Brooke, I definitely get that aspect of it. This is the new fire drill. I mean, this is what we have to do to prepare our kids. I just don't like the Hollywood aspect of it. I mean, what's next? Are we going to have the cast of Grey's Anatomy training medical staff across the country? <laughs> or we were just talking about Chris Brown. Kerry Washington plays Olivia Pope, a public relations guru on Scandal. Is she going to show up and fix his life? Hollywood stars need to stay out of real life issues when it does not warrant their participation. Amy, you get the final word, and then we're done. Yeah, well, the issue is is that Hollywood has a tremendous influence on us in social media, our children, the way we think. It's blended. And the minute that we acknowledge that is the minute we can all work together to fix these issues. Lauren Ashburn, John Murray, Amy Palmer, Chris Freitz, thank you so much, you all. Let's do it again thank sometime. You. Thank Coming you. Coming up next, this is uh, quite the talker. The